This short video will be an introduction to the uh, process of transcription or the formation of RNA. So uh, where does this fit into the central dogma and the flow of information in the cell? So central dogma, of course, you start with DNA, which is the source of the genetic material. And it is the process of transcription whereby uh, the DNA is used as a template to make a new molecule uh, called RNA. And that's shown here in red. The RNA then provides the information uh, needed to uh, produce a protein, and, the pro and this process is called translation. So if you compare the molecules of RNA versus DNA, uh, there are a couple of minor differences. What you see here are the bases, or the sorry, the sugars that are used in RNA versus DNA. So RNA uses ribose, and ribose differs from deoxyribose in that it has an OH on the two prime carbon. Deoxyribose does not have this, and this small difference makes RNA much less stable compared to DNA, and usually it prefers to remain single-stranded um, instead of forming the double helix, the double helix uh, DNA molecule that that uh, deoxyribose will form. The other main difference is found in one of the bases, and so these are the ribonucleotides shown here, and again, uses the ribose sugar instead of deoxyribose in all four of those ribonucleotides. Um, for the bases, three of the bases are exactly the same between our ribonucleotides and deoxyribonucleotides. So adenine, guanine, and cytosine are exactly the same, whereas um, ribonucleotides use a uracil instead of a thymine um, for the fourth base. And uracil is very, very similar to thymine, uh, it just is missing a methyl group on that nitrogen ring. Uracil um, acts pretty much just like thymine, so a base pair, complementary base pair with adenine, and um, it will form two hydrogen bonds uh, with adenine. Okay, so RNA, uh, there are several different kinds of RNA, and usually when we say, you know, use the word RNA, people kind of imply or it's sort of implicit that you mean a messenger RNA, but there's actually a whole different class of RNAs in addition to messenger RNAs. So let's talk about what the differences are between these two classes of RNAs. Messenger RNAs are these molecules, RNA molecules, that code for a protein. So these are the ones that are you know, doing that information flow from DNA to RNA to protein. In contrast, functional RNAs, which are the second main category of RNA, um, protein is not produced. So this RNA is produced, but it does not code for a protein. And in fact, RNA is the final functional molecule that is produced. Uh, you've probably heard of some of these types of functional RNAs. Transfer RNAs um, work during translation to bring amino acids to the uh, uh, to the uh, ribosome. Ribosomal RNAs work as part of the whole complex of a ribosome. Uh, this is an RNA that's part of a, a, a whole bunch of other proteins joins together to make this functional complex. Uh, small nuclear RNAs are involved in splicing of mRNAs. And then microRNAs, small interfering RNAs, we'll talk about later in the course. They're actually involved in the regulation of uh, translation. So uh, let's talk a little bit about uh, just an overview of the process of, trans of transcription. So first of all, uh, DNA is used as a template. And so on the bottom here is DNA. And <clears throat> RNA uh, bases will come in and complementary base pair with the, uh, with the bases on the DNA strand. Now RNA, if you can uh, notice here is also a polarized molecule just like DNA and so it goes it's a five prime end and a three prime end likewise uh, with DNA double stranded or, or double helix DNA um, RNA duplex, when it forms a duplex with DNA, it is anti-parallel. So the DNA strand is going 5 prime to 3 prime um, in left to right direction. This RNA is going 5 prime to 3 prime from right to left in the opposite direction. 
Okay, uh, really important, just like when DNA is produced, RNA uh, also, when it adds a new nucleotide, it's going to add it on the three prime end. Okay, so here comes a new nucleotide. This is where the next one gets added. It doesn't get added to the five prime end. It only gets added to the three prime end of this strand of RNA. And so the way the overview of how this happens in the cell is shown here. And so uh, DNA is double stranded, and the two strands separate, and these nucleotide, these ribonucleotides, will come in complementary base pair with the uh, template strand of the DNA and then RNA polymerase, the enzyme RNA polymerase actually synthesizes this strand. So uh, what's shown here is called a transcription bubble. So it's a, sh a small region where the double-stranded DNA separates from each other. The two strands separate from each other, allowing that RNA to, uh, to base pair with the DNA. Um, Remember that new new bases are going to be added to the three prime end, and so the way this is going to be working, um, as this gene continues to be transcribed, you're going to see continual unwinding in the direction to the left, and um, this this DNA RNA duplex only lasts for about 10 to 15 bases, and then that RNA gets kicked out, and the DNA DNA double helix will reform. And so here. The, the DNA is re, re finding you know its its base its uh, strand complementary strand, whereas over this way it's it's starting to unwind further. Okay, every single every single gene has a particular strand of the DNA from which it is uh, from which it is or that is used as the template. So here's an example. So you have the double-stranded DNA shown here. So five prime to three prime, five prime to three prime in the anti-parallel direction, right? And the RNA that's produced from this strand of DNA is shown here. And what you can see is that it is complementary to this strand in the middle, which is labeled the template strand. Okay, um, so we always call this the template strand. This is the one that actually, you know, provided the information for making that RNA molecule. The other strand we have a name for as well. And so even though this top strand is not used during the formation of, of RNA molecule, nevertheless, we call it the coding strand, or also it's also called the non-template strand. So why do we even name it? Why do we care about you know this this particular strand which is not used? So it turns out that the RNA sequence that's produced is pretty similar to the coding strand sequence, right? It's exactly the same, in fact, except there's U's instead of T's. Okay, and so since we're very often interested in you know what is the RNA that's produced from this gene, what protein does that you know does that code for? What amino acids does that code for? Um, we're very interested often in looking at the DNA and asking, oh, what's the coding strand say? Because this is the one that actually tells you which codons um, are going to be used uh, to make a protein. Now, for every particular gene, right, that particular gene is always transcribed off of a particular strand of the DNA. And so here's gene one, and it, these are the two strands of DNA shown here. And every single time that gene is transcribed, it's always going to be the top strand that acts as <clears throat> the template strand. It is not always the top strand that acts as a template strand for other genes. And so, for example, here's a gene that uses the bottom strand as a template. And just remember, these are going in opposite directions. And we often write the direction of the gene from the beginning to the end. So the, the direction in which the transcription occurs is, in this case, is going from right to left, whereas this one is going to be going from left to right. OK, so just to summarize, you have different genes, here's gene 1, gene 2, that, that may use different template strands, right? But every time this particular gene is transcribed, it's always going to use that bottom strand.